We have a lot of strong female characters in our show. The writers often do, I would say, a good job in, in, in preserving that strength. And we've had some wonderful characters. Obviously, you've got Milady, um, season one, season two. But of course, you've got Constance, you know, you've got Her Majesty, Anne. And then we've got uh, our newest member, um, Sylvie. The women are really quite strong and they're just very passionate about their cause. Calling for the king's head is open sedition. That has nothing to do with Beaufort's accusations against us. Sylvie really is a revolutionary and she's an incredibly passionate, independent woman. She knows what it is to be real and she knows what it is to, to grow up with nothing or very little at least. She's uh, attracted the attention of Athos. She's like a, a leader of men as well. She has a, she's a good orator and manages to pull many people around in order to sow the seeds of revolution. There's not a lot of give and take with them. It's, it's more like sort of grab and push away. Thank you. Thank you. Well, they sort of have a relationship that comes sort of at the wrong moment for Sylvie. Uh, when you see them when they first meet, she's holding a gun to him because he's the opposition. And it's impossible for her to even contemplate their relationship at the start. But she likes him and it's a chemical thing. Because of that, uh, she keeps going back to him and he keeps going back to her and they're not quite sure why. It just is what it is initially. They don't call it anything. They're not going on dates. They meet in quite adverse circumstances. There's something there. They become some sort of um, outlet for each other. And it does grow into something more. But, you know, Athos being Athos and Sylvie being Sylvie, it's not a particularly smooth road. What? I can fight. I noticed. It's for your own safety and ours. It's obviously been pretty tough for Constance since D'Artagnan went to war. She's so different to how she is season one and season two. More back to probably what you saw her as in series one. What are you up to now? She's got a completely new role. I mean, you know, she, she's a warrior now. She's almost like a female musketeer, playing a very strong role of leadership at the garrison. She's taken on the cadet. What have I told you about running? She's become this empowered woman. She feels much freer, and I think it just allows her to, to grow as a person. Arrest them! You can't do that! She's in a world of men, and it's tough, so she's had to, like, stick up for herself. There hasn't been anyone else to kind of save the day. It's great to see her sort of, you know, with more authority, and it kind of complements the strong wife that D'Artagnan has, you know, and uh, it, it makes them sort of, you know, more of a team as well. We're freeing those people in there. Of course we are. Do you think we've been out here doing nothing? We have the Queen, obviously, who um, we've got to know. She's always been strong. She's always been graceful, despite being in grave danger and awful at the time, she's been able to show her guts, her bravery. She's a very strong woman. She has no choice but to be a strong woman. And, and, and you know, she's being tested because she's a Spanish queen in a French court and she's alone. Because of events that happened in the second series with Aramis, the question of parenthood, the relationship has gone from bad to worse. Trust has completely broke down. Everything that's happened, she's sort of on much more shaky ground. I can keep my own counsel on who can and cannot be trusted. There's a lot to overcome and just by default she's an incredibly strong woman to be standing up to that and uh, and still marking her territory and uh, and making sure she's heard. My quarters are not your domain. You will leave this instant. The relationship with Aramis is something that she has tried to put to bed. So when Aramis returns she She's actually really trying to push him out of her life. Why are you here? The feelings are probably still there, but she doesn't want to acknowledge them in the, in the way that she, she did before. Even a faint note of surprise would have been nice. Obviously, Milady is such an iconic part of the Musketeers and also of our show. It was interesting, because I think at the end of the first series, they said, we We'll tie that relationship up. That won't be in the second series. And by the time we'd shot the scenes at the end of series one, they went, you know what, there's more there. And the same thing happened at the end of last year. It was kind of like, well, we've tied this up. 
we shot that scene in the tunnel and it was like, nah, there's a lot here. There's a lot still you could do.